Hey everyone, it's Sevi. After waiting for so long, we finally got a new cryo unit in the form of an overworked, sleep-deprived, anxiety-ridden student who can't afford to sleep because of the fear of looming academic deadlines and papers and, let's be honest, this is way too relatable. Anyway, it's Layla, a cryo support that mainly offers shielding and cryo application for your team. It's a bit of a familiar story as we've seen something similar in Diona's kit, but Layla has some particular features that does make her kit distinguishable enough. So in this guide, I'll be covering her talents and kit, constellations, artifact builds, weapon options, and team recommendations. Let's wake her up and see what she has to offer. Hi, I'm Layla. I look forward to working with you. Starting with her talents, Layla's normal attack is a 3-hit combo of physical damage along with a charge attack that costs 20 stamina, all of which scale on her attack stat. But since Layla is primarily an off-field unit, you can generally ignore these. Moving on, Layla's skill is her core support utility. Casting it deals cryo damage in an area around her and generates a shield with an absorption that scales based on Layla's max HP. The shield scaling can be really good, and if you fully build her as a shield support, it does the job of making most battles generally comfortable. It also has an additional cryo damage absorption, making it more effective against cryo enemies. Her skill has a 12 second duration, but also exactly a 12 second cooldown, meaning that if it doesn't break, you can refresh it right away after it expires for a new nearly full shield uptime. While the shield is active, you can accumulate these so-called night stars. It automatically accumulates one star every 1.5 seconds, and whenever a party member uses a skill, you get two stars. Once she reaches the maximum four night stars, these will turn into shooting stars that seem to target the closest enemy within range. While each star targets one enemy, they can potentially deal splash damage if two enemies are grouped very closely. Then after the four stars have been used, you can start accumulating night stars again, which repeats the whole process process. However, if the shield breaks or expires while you're in the process of creating night stars, you will lose all the ones you've collected. The skill seems to have a specific ICD as well. If all the shooting stars hit the same enemy, only the first one will apply cryo, while the next three don't. As for her skill's particle generation, it doesn't generate any when she hits enemies upon her initial cast. Instead, it only generates one or two particles when one of her four shooting stars hits an enemy. This presents some considerations to keep in mind. Mind. If the shield breaks, it halts her energy generation. Layla is also unlikely to catch her own cryo particles since she'll be off field more when the shooting stars hit enemies. Instead, another active character will be the one getting the particles. This reduces the amount of energy she gets from her own generated particles, thereby requiring her to build more ER than normally, or use other effects to help get energy, which I'll talk more about later. Related to her skill are her first and fourth ascension passives. Her A1 passive gives an increasing shield strength buff to a teammate protected by her shield when it stacks night stars. This basically makes her shield able to take more damage, boosting her defensive utility. Then her A4 passive gives her shooting stars a damage increase based on 1.5% of Layla's max HP. By default, her skill damage multiplier actually scales on attack, but with this passive, at least her damage sources are streamlined to scale on HP. Then for Layla's burst, it's a very simple ability. She summons a floating ball that fires starlight slugs every 1.5 seconds at enemies within its large AoE. Its main purpose is to apply cryo with some damage on the side. These target one enemy at a time but can do splash damage to closely grouped enemies. But unlike her skill damage multiplier which scales on attack, her burst's damage multiplier is inherently based on max HP. As for its ICD, it has a standard ICD. If it's hitting the same target, it can only apply cryo every other hit, which is every 3 seconds. You also want her skill and burst to be active at the same time, because when a starlight slug hits an enemy while her shield is active, a night star can be generated once every 0.5 seconds. And like her skill, the burst has a 12 second duration and cooldown, which shows how perfectly they line up. Since its cooldown is quick, it also has a low 40 energy cost. As a summary, Layla's short cooldowns make her quite good for quick team rotations. However, her skill and burst have relatively low damage scaling. This gives the impression that they're not meant to really deal noteworthy damage, but rather they're more for cryo application. Still, if you really want to get more damage out of her, I'll include DPS build recommendations in the build section. For her talent priority, you should focus on her skill first to improve her shield utility, then you can follow it up with her burst if you want to do more damage. Then it's best to leave her normal attacks alone and save your resources. 
Now let's look at her constellations, which are mostly pretty useful. C1 increases the shield absorption of her skill, which translates to better survivability. But more importantly, it lets you generate a weaker shield for party members in co-op, which might be useful if you do multiplayer a lot. C2 lets her skill's shooting stars generate one energy each time they hit an enemy, which is a huge quality of life improvement on her energy needs. The real value of this is because Layla can now constantly generate flat energy even if she's off-field, which will lead you to needing much less ER. C3 increases her skill level by 3, which adds even more shield thickness. C4 makes it so that when you fire the shooting stars, you grant all party members a charge of Dawn Star. You can consume a Dawn Star by doing a normal or charged attack, and that will get additional base damage equivalent to 5% of Layla's max HP. Note that a party member's Dawn Star will be cleared right after doing a normal or charged attack. In this clip sample, only Razor's first hit was buffed, but his next attacks weren't. C4 basically enhances her support role by also having a damage increase effect to normal and charged attacks, but it will be best used in a quick swap team where you can cycle through each teammate's auto attack. C5 increases her burst level by 3, and C6 essentially makes her skill and burst deal more damage while also letting her generate stars quicker by reducing the creation interval. Being able to generate stars faster also enhances her previous constellation effects, particularly her C4 and C2. It can also help further guarantee consistent uptime on the tenacity set if you're using her with it. All in all, these are constellations worth having, but of course, you don't need them to start building and enjoying her. Moving on to her builds, when it comes to her artifacts, you can either go for a support-focused or hybrid support DPS build. My personal recommendation is to focus on her as a support, but I'll also discuss how to build her for more damage. A support build is very simple and efficient as it prioritizes making her shields beefy and ensuring consistent burst uptime. As such, the main stats needed will just be a full HP build on her Sands, Goblet, and Circlet. If you have no other source of ER, you could opt for an ER Sands instead to help guarantee burst uptime. However, putting on an ER weapon and getting ER from substats can be enough to fulfill her ER requirement. Then the preferred substats are HP and ER. If you do get some crits, then that does increase her damage by a little bit, but they're lower priority for a support build. It's highly recommended to have ample ER as her burst's cryo application is also one of her valuable support utilities. Here are some starting ER ranges, but note that her ER requirements can change depending on various factors. If you're trying to burst right after cooldown within a 12 to 15 second rotation, her ER requirement is a bit higher. With a cryo teammate who also generates cryo particles, she may need around 140 to 160% ER. But if she's a solo cryo unit, it may rise upwards of 200%. While it looks unusually high, it's largely due to her having no other cryo to battery her and being unable to catch her own particles. But to emphasize, this is if you're aiming to burst right after cooldown. However, if you're only bursting every 20 seconds or so, then her target ER drops further and you also have more time to funnel particles while she's on field. With a cryo teammate, this can range from 100 to 140%. As the solo cryo, it can range from 140 to 180%. As always, ER requirements can go down depending on enemies, energy giving equipment, if you have C2, etc. For her support sets, an easy to farm 2 piece combo is a 2 piece tenacity plus 2 piece ER set to make her shield stronger and help with energy needs. But if you want to maximize her support more, go for one of the full set options. A 4 piece tenacity gives your team an attack and shield strength buff, which perfectly synergizes with Layla's shield support role. Her shooting stars can maintain the 4 piece effect's uptime consistently as long as you're continuously creating them. And having Layla's burst up helps a lot with that, so fulfill her ER needs. Unfortunately, this set can't be strong boxed yet, and it shares a domain with a pale flame set for physical units, which you may not need. Alternatively, there's the 4 piece Noblesse set. It only gives an attack buff compared to Tenacity, and you have to use her burst to trigger it, so you really need to ensure she has enough ER, but at least this can be strong boxed. There are also situationally viable 4 star artifact sets. The 4 piece exile set lets her refund your team's energy, which can help for energy hungry teams. And the 4 piece instructor set can be equipped on her, particularly if she's in a reaction or bloom based team, to buff your teammates EM. But as 4 stars, the caveat is they have lower stat ceilings. 
At some point, you might be thinking of increasing her personal damage by using a more damage-oriented build. The trade-off is that you'll have weaker shielding, but maybe you're okay with that. In that case, you'll want to aim for an HP or ER Sands, a Cryo Damage Goblet, and a Crit Circlet. Since her burst is a significant source of damage, you'll still want to meet her ER requirement for consistent burst uptime. The previous ER recommendations are also still applicable. To maximize her set bonuses for damage, you'll want more offensive bonuses. Two-piece set combos of Blizzard Strayer, Noblesse, Tenacity, or Emblem will be easier to farm. Then a four-piece Blizzard Strayer should only be used in a freeze team, but it will let her achieve the highest damage ceiling possible in that scenario. You'll also want to use a crit damage circlet in this case since its effect already adds a lot of crit rate. Alternatively, a 4-piece emblem set helps address her energy needs and boosts her burst damage, and it's not locked to a freeze team. It's up to you if you want to try min-maxing her stats to find the right balance of offense and defense for you. Of course, since Layla isn't made to be a DPS, you should definitely lower your expectations if you're looking for damage. Again, just slapping on a full HP build is the easiest and most efficient route. Now for her weapon options, and like with artifacts, it depends if you're looking to boost her support utility or damage. And since Layla is primarily an HP scaling character, attack isn't as important of a stat here. Starting with her support weapons, my top recommendation is the Favonius Sword. It helps address a lot or even all of her ER needs, and it lets her generate particles for herself and the team. Generating particles for herself will be particularly valuable when she casts her skill, as she can at least catch them while she's on field. You may need to build some crit rate on her to more reliably proc the effect. But this becomes less of an issue if she's on a freeze team since Cryo Resonance gives characters added crit rate and less so if she has a Blizzard Strayer equipped. Another possible ER weapon is the Sacrificial Sword, but since her skill cooldown is already very short and she doesn't generate particles upon casting it, what you're mainly looking for here is the high ER it gives. Its skill reset effect also has a cooldown which limits how often it will be activated. Other less recommended but usable options are the Festering Desire, though it's a very old limited weapon, and the 3-star Skyrider Sword can serve as a good placeholder weapon for its high ER stat. The Skyward Blade is also viable for its ER, though Favonius Sword is still more recommended. The key of Kajni's suit can also be used on her as it beefs up her HP by a lot. It adds another support utility since it can buff your teammate's EM based on the user's max HP, which is nice for reaction-based teams. You just have to wait for the shooting stars to hit in order to get the full stacks at the start of a battle. One more niche option is the Freedom Sworn, which gives attack and damage bonus buffs for your team. If your teammates can take advantage of it, then it has better value. Next are a few more damage-oriented weapons. If you are trying to give her a DPS build, the previous ER weapons to fulfill her energy requirements and Key of Kajni Suit to increase her HP scaling damage are still viable. You do get a few more possible options for increasing damage. One is the Harbinger of Dawn, which is a cheap but very effective choice since it gives her a ton of crit stats as long as her HP is above 90%. This can likely be the case since she'll quickly be swapped in and out anyway. However, the moment she gets gets damaged enough and without a healer in the team, it loses half its utility, already making it a bit risky. A more premium option is the Jade Cutter, which gives her a high crit rate with a small HP bonus, though on a freeze team this might lead her crit rate to overcap. Of course, you have your other crit weapons, which I won't go through anymore. At the very least, if Layla can't fully utilize all of their passive effects, they'll be crit stat sticks. Finally, let's cover some of Layla's best team role recommendations. In this aspect, you may be wondering how Layla compares to our already existing 4-star cryo shielder, Diona. Here are some main differences between them that you can consider. Diona consolidates both shielding and healing, while Layla simply shields, which means if you need healing, you will need to delegate that role to a different character. However, Layla does her shielding duty very well. Factoring in Layla's and Diona's multipliers and bonuses, a C0 Layla shield is comparable to a C5 Diona hold skill shield, assuming equal investment. From there, Layla's shield just gets better with constellations. Concerning energy, Diona can generate particles upon her skill cast, making it easier to funnel particles and battery others in quick swap teams. Layla, on the other hand, generates particles over time, making it harder to funnel to a specific character unless that character takes a lot of field time. 
Layla has shorter cooldowns, which means you can get her shield back slightly sooner than Diona's shield if it breaks. Layla can also have a more consistent uptime on her cryo application compared to Diona. Then each of them have their respective bonus effects, and the relevance of each can depend on the team and personal preference. But moving on, Layla can be a generalist shielder for many teams as long as her cryo does not disrupt important reactions in that team. Thankfully, her short cooldowns can accommodate both short and long rotation times for various teams. There are some teams though where she can perform more optimally. Layla works pretty well in a freeze team as she can be a constant source of cryo application that sets up or triggers frozen. This team template is a cryo DPS and a hydro unit, then Layla will be the second cryo providing support utilities. The fourth slot can be Animo, another hydro, or another cryo. Animo units are highly preferred to crowd control enemies and swarm around the hydro or cryo auras, making it easier to freeze them together and to shred cryo resistance with a viridescent venerer set. Here, Layla gives strong shielding that if ever an unfrozen enemy gets a hit in, she can protect you from them, and so having a healer in the team becomes less necessary. Preferably, she'll be built with a 4-piece tenacity or noblesse to buff the DPSs, or a blizzard strayer if you want to boost her damage output. In this regard, she will work well alongside all the currently available cryo DPSs. DPSs. If you have Shenhe on the team, who's a premium cryo damage buffer, then that's one way to give a big boost to Layla's own damage. One specific variant of a freeze team is also the Morgana comp, which is originally composed of Kanyu, Mona, Venti, and Diona. If you don't have Diona, then Layla is a viable substitute since her cooldowns fit well with this team's 15 second rotation time. If you remove a Hydro unit and just keep in Cryo units with an optional Animo or Geo, then the team can be a Mono Cryo team instead. However, it's highly preferable to have Shenhe in the team to give a huge damage boost to all the Cryo members. There are also Bloom teams that incorporate the Freeze reaction. A Fridge team makes your Bloom team have freezing for crowd control and to help your Hydro unit more consistently trigger the Bloom reaction. Layla can also protect you from the self-damage mechanic of Bloom, but because of that you will really want to build her into a full shield support to ensure that her shield does not break prematurely from the combined damage of your enemies and Bloom. Freeze is also compatible on a Hyper Bloom team, which involves a Hydro, Dendro, Electro, and Cryo, creating what's called a Hyper Fridge team. It also gives similar benefits to the Fridge team, but this time, making Hyper Blooms the main damage source. Layla can also be a defensive support for physical carries like Eula or Razor. Layla's cryo application can help Razor maintain superconduct uptime. Plus, her particle generation over time can battery the carries during their on-field time as well. You can make her a shielder for certain pyro units like Yoimiya. On enemies that can be frozen, inserting Layla could result in some melts. But on bosses that can't be frozen and the frozen aura doesn't stay, Layla can accidentally steal some hydro which results in some mist vapes. At the at the very least, she will still be a good shield, especially if you have no other defensive options. I tried Layla in a few other comps, including Reverse Melt, but unfortunately she didn't have much damage to contribute in comparison to our already good 4-star Reverse Melt units Rosaria and Kaya. She can be slotted alongside the national team core, but more as a shield or flex slot that can hold support artifact sets to buff her teammates. Again, this comes at the cost of a unit that can contribute higher DPS. There are probably a couple of niche builds that you can experiment with, but the ones I've discussed and tested so far will be the common team templates, and perhaps more comps may arise in the future. Anyway, that's going to be all for this Layla guide. I personally find her to be a simple and straightforward unit who does her job well. Now if only she can submit all her papers in time. Let me know in the comments if you pulled Layla and what you think of her. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care! Aww, why do I have to write so many papers? Why?